So by the time of her second Nobel Prize, her husband's gone. He's deceased. He was, yes, five, five years. Gone. And from what I understand, there was some highly written about in the media affair between her and a married man. Uh -oh. Is that, do I remembering this correctly? Yes. Okay. And uh, today, I don't know how important that would be to anybody. So in the late aughts, okay, early 1910s, <laughs> It that information is received differently. Now she's a celebrity, so everyone is going to care about her sex life, okay? Because that, yeah, right? well, that's what we do. That that's how that goes. So, did this matter to the Nobel Committee? Were they? It mattered to everyone. She was vilified. She was called a homewrecker and a foreigner because he was a married man with children. So word of this got out, and it got out in the wake of a highly important physics meeting where only the top physicists in the world were invited to attend. She was there. She was the only woman in the room. And they come out. Albert Einstein was there. Ernest well, Rutherford, a few people you've heard of. Rutherford discovered the nucleus of the atom. Well, these, are, these are some heavy hitters. Yeah, big, heavy? Yeah. Big time. So she's vilified, and the cheating husband is not vilified. Right. Mm. Right. He's a victim. Oh, he's a victim. Oh. oh. So oh, okay. they, uh, it's the it's the harlot scientist. Of course, <laughs> you know she's a foreigner, <laughs> and she, she's, she had recently tried to gain election to the Academy of Sciences. So, so that people got jingoistic. 